Hey, welcome to this episode. Today we're we're gonna cut this steel up and put it in the house. I'm not a steel fabricator. I'm not in anything, but I learn how to do everything. So got some measurements. We're gonna start breaking that down. Got a bunch of angles buttoned together, a bunch of stuff. I'll show you how it all works. So in the house, I've got some steel beams that are carrying my my uh, landing and my stairs, my landing for my stairs. And I gotta get all that in. It's my next step, and then I can frame around that. Been waiting for this for a couple weeks and here it is, so let's get to work. Also, today is the first day I have power. Lights, no generator, oh that's so nice. So we're gonna break all this down. I got my first measurements and we'll start breaking those big beams down. I don't know what's going on, but I keep losing my audio clips. What I'm trying to explain is those steel beams are dirty and rusty. So I gotta grind all this stuff up. I got a wire wheel on there. And it is a dirty, dirty job. I was so dirty, but 100% of that has to be taken off so that I can get it prepped for paint. Okay, here's what I got going on. Oh, the house looks something like this. I got a steel beam right here. With a post and a post. Post right there with a the steel beam that comes into this. Then I've got a cantilevered steel stair landing that goes down. So I've got these measurements, 15, 4, I don't remember what that one is. So this intersection right here, I'm going to have this steel beam. And I've also got this one connecting. But I need to cut, to cut this flange in here because there's angle iron and bolts, four bolts. They go through there and then the angle iron like that, four bolts that go through here. So I've got just, anyway, I measured the distance from here to here, it's three and three sixteenths. So I'm gonna cut it at three so that these two points will contact tight. I have a little wiggle room here and I can bring it together with the bolts. So that's my first step. In the last few years, these circular saw blades and metal have come a long way, and they are the best gift to a rookie fabricator. I love them. It makes life so easy, almost like framing. Did I mention how in love I am with the trolley? I oh, hope it makes life so easy. Not a chance I could turn over that thousand pound beam by myself, but you can roll it around. So nice. Couldn't really find a good way to get the end of these flanges off, so I just went in with the grinder and wiggled it off with the wrench. Uh, angle brackets that hold the two beams together after that cut cold to the touch Just the coolest technology ever love those things Okay, I got these brackets all cut ready. I cleaned the metal It has bolts which do most of the structural work, but I'm gonna tack them in place and Then I'm gonna tack the bottom and the top Then I'll drill my holes through all three and everything will be perfect. I set those that three and three sixteenths out so it should be just perfect. Should be. Right, I'm gonna put the beam over, put the other one on. Okay, we're back today. Um, had a bunch of stuff I had to figure out and I got it all kind of sorted. Got a bunch of parts that I've never used before, but to start with, I bought this uh, liquid spray deal from Amazon. It's made out of Chinesium. Um, I had to rig all this crap up, get an airline, a bunch of fittings, a bunch of junk. So that's gonna squirt fluid onto my bit. These bits, this was 
275 bucks a set. So I got this machine crap on uh, Amazon. It's concentrate, you mix it with water. New Milwaukee drill. One of the benefits of doing your own crap is it saves you enough money to buy tools that you can have forever. So we're gonna fire this up. I got it all laid out. See how this works. Turn my magnet on, it's good. Turn on some air. And then some liquid. Oh, that's cool. Okay. Let's try it. I'm not getting a good grab with the magnet. It's because I'm not sitting good on the metal, I'm not grabbing with the magnet. Back to you when I figure this out. I figured it out. It cuts a hole, it leaves that center, and then this plug gets stuck in the bottom. So every time I go through a piece of metal, I gotta pull that out. Now I got her figured out. Okay, that beam I just drilled the uh, brackets on was right here. Got that done, I got this one cut. Now I have this cantilevered landing on the second floor. I got stairs below. Those stairs are 42 inches. And I need four inches for handrails, so this needs to be 46 inches with that little piece going in and a 45 degree. So I'm gonna start working on that. And I'll do I'll put the brackets on, drill them all out so that they can receive this bolt, these through bolt together. Anyway, kind of complicated to understand on that, but I'll show you as I go. Okay, this is the landing. Just like the other pieces, no need to show you that, but I've cut the 45s. That's all laid out by point square, 61 inches. 61 inches. Now I'm going to tack it together and then weld it all up. I've been playing with this for like an hour trying to get this all figured out. You only get one shot. But I think I'm ready to weld it. This is the cantilevered part. The stairs go down. So. I'm out of excuses why I can't do it, so we're going to weld it now. When you're doing these welds, you grind a little channel so that the weld can penetrate, and then after you grind it smooth, you got a penetrated weld in there. The, bot the top was narrower in the bottom, so I put that spreader clamped on the outside. It's as true as I can get it. This, these beams are not consistent at all. But this is going to be covered in concrete because of the radiant. You don't see that. The most important is the bottom, so I got it good.
I got it all put together. I got my landing welded. I welded it to this beam. That's how it looks in the house. It's exactly how it sits in the house. So I've got it all put together and I'm going to drill my holes so that when I put it up, we can just put it together, put the holes together. I'm going to do a temporary tack weld once I get everything square and I'll drill all my holes. And then more stuff later. together so nice. Okay, my next step is to weld these studs on. Because I've got to put a 2x8 on here. That will bolt on so that I can hang a floor joist. So I got floor joists hanging off these beams. That's what I'm doing. So I've already laid everything out. the whole bunch. Okay, I've got this all done. Bondled that. And sanded it all nice and smooth. This is a trick for your, you're not a very good welder. That's all ready. Painted these last night in the headlamps. I couldn't really video it, but I started with this white primer rolling it on, but I can't stand the roller texture. I want it smooth, so I went and bought rattle cans and painted those. Those two are ready. I just got to finish this one, paint it, and then I got to start figuring out these post links. We're getting pretty close to install. All right, another week's gone by, back to Saturday. I've gone over to the house and I've measured from the, the base plates that I anchored on the foundation up to the top plate. We get uh, 10 foot nine and a quarter. This is 13 inch seven eighths. So I take the 10 foot nine and a quarter minus the 13 inch seven eighths. I get nine foot seven and three eighths. Another way I check it is I take 129 and a quarter. I lined up on the top. Better show you the right way, huh? I run out the tape at 129 and a quarter. Line that up to my top. Yep, 115 and 3 eighths. Then I've double checked. So I've got uh, one, two, two at that length. So I got my pulse material over here. I'm going to cut those and get them ready. I've got two beams that stack pretty much on top of each other. One carries the floor, and the top of that is the top of the nine foot wall. That's nine foot one and one eighth. The top of that beam, that's what I've already calculated from the posts. But I gotta stack another steel post and another steel beam on top. So I've gotta figure out my pitch and how much that climbs. Which is not as hard as it sounds. 25 foot five and a half. 25 foot 5 inch 1 half. That is my run. Trigonometry. Run. I've got a 4 inch pitch because this roof is a 412. Then I'm going to hit rise. <clears throat> and that's how high I got to be from my plate to that corner right there. 
Eight foot, where's my, what did I do with it? Eight foot, five and three quarters. That's from top of that plate, top of that plate. Now I've just got to figure out, I've got an inch and a half uh, top plate on there that I need to subtract. One and one half. And then I got to subtract the height of that beam, which I don't remember what that is. Let me go get a measurement. 13 and 5 eighths. <clears throat> That's not subtract, that is plus, because I got to go down another inch and a half. So we'll take that eight foot, five inch, three quarter, minus 13 inch, five eighths. I've taken that out and I've got to add an inch and a half to get to the bottom, which makes my steel post seven foot, five and five eighths. You can figure it out all on the ground. That way when I have welders here, my welder won't reach the house, so I got to get a welder. Everything's cut. All we got to do is just stack it and weld it. I'm also going to weld studs on here and here so that I can put angle brace with the turnbuckle so I can level everything up. I'm going to cut those, figure out a way to sling these, and then we're ready for welding. Ready to build the house. Holy hand, that's taking forever. I can't even tell you the time that this metal has consumed in my brain and my dreams. For two years, I've been visualizing this. The house is built around this stuff. And I fabbed it all up there. I measured 45 times. It freaking worked. I nailed it. it it's perfect. I'm a freaking fabricator. It's so awesome. I can't even tell you how excited I am about that. So. That carries the upper roof. Trestles are going to land up there. 
we're gonna land on this wall when I put it up up there. But this is my cantilevered uh, the stairs. Gonna have that single stringer going down here, and I wanted to cantilever. The problem was with this, I would have had to have a post right here. So all of this steel came from eliminating that post. Now I'm free span open. We got our kitchen and our island and all that. No more interior walls. This is so stinking cool. You want to get me excited. Spend $7,000, two weeks in welding, and have it actually work. Um, I'm going to show you. Underneath there, that's where I bondoed. Remember? That's freaking money, huh? And remember I drilled these, pre-drilled those holes in the shop. It, it came out so, so perfect. I pre-drilled these holes. Look at that. It's just awesome. Damn. Cool. Or Joyce can run over here tomorrow. Anyway. I don't get too excited, but man, am I excited. That is awesome. Okay. Celebrating's over. Tomorrow we'll put on some floor. Build some more stuff. Man, that's dirty. Alright. Catch you on the next one.